Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We're live today. Happy Monday. Hold on, I'm going to throw our little money intro in. Sorry, you got to put that in there. <laughs> That's really fancy. Yes. Got to get used to throwing those little intros in instead of the countdown. Thank you, producers. Job well done. Yes. So happy Monday. We're back to a full work week. We're excited for the week ahead. Um, we were off last Monday, so we've got some catch up to do. Uh, you know, we were diving into our track program. Uh, you know, last week was listings. The week before was, or this week, or sorry, week before was listings. This week, this prior week was buyers. So, I want to talk to you about, you know, what are the key things with getting listings, and then how to really do the buyer consults and stuff. Um, so we got a jam packed fifteen minutes here. Yep, yep, that's right. We uh, we covered, you know, this this training session that we've had. The twelve week training session has been super comprehensive. It's covering everything that any agent would want to know about building a, a great real estate business from beginning to end. The program is awesome. Whether you're a beginner or you're a veteran, everybody could use that extra motivation to boost up their business. So this this program, because it's a 12 week program, it would also, I think, go really well with the 12 week year program because, you know, very true. Uh, this this would be uh, this would be awesome. So. Um, and we're going to rerun this 12 week program as soon as this one, this one's over, which is in about yeah. six weeks. So we're about at the halfway point now. Yeah, we're at the halfway point and they're getting into the good stuff right now where it is on lead generation and opportunities, finding those opportunities from your database to the buyers, to the listings, open houses, et cetera. First four weeks is all mindset, you know, my mindset. Now let's go make some money. And it's showing us how to do that. Um, and, um, if you want to sign up, right, because we're doing this as a group. There's about 20 of us in the group. So yeah. we're going to do an, a new group once this one's over six weeks from now. So yeah. um, for anyone interested in, in doing this again with us, just let us know and uh, we'll get you signed up And because you need materials and you need all that stuff in advance. Yeah, get it ahead of time so you can get get yourself a game a game plan ahead of time. It always helps versus hey, it starts on Sunday, so let's get let's order our stuff on Saturday and it never happens. Right. <laughs> you know, always so, a week, uh, week away. Yeah. We missed Labor Day uh, last Monday because in acknowledgement of Labor Day. So um, we, we're catching up for today. This weekend was September 11th. So um, condolences to everyone affected by that. That was uh, near and dear to me. Uh, originally from New York, I remember uh, where I was during all that. So um, they, I don't know, they should make it a national holiday, uh, but we'll we'll see. Don't Hopefully. they? I thought they did, but if they haven't, they need to because it is it's a huge day for everyone to remember and stuff. And it was kind of cool, just as a side note, with my son's football game this weekend at Brantley. Um, he's eighth grade, and they can't, had all the kids running through the flag, through the banner with you know carrying the American flag. And we had the game on Saturday, so it was perfect timing for all that. Yeah. Um, you know, nice way to commemorate that. Yeah, that was that. That's great that that you guys yeah. did that. Uh, I was flying the American flag on the boat. So there you go. <laughs> Even uh, better. So so Labor Day week we covered listings, all about listings from beginning to end, almost everything you'd ever want to know about getting listings and working with sellers. Um, that was a jam packed week. Um, you know, what do you have, Todd? So I'll dive into some some of the ideas for lead generation. Um, you know, there's four things that they talk about in the class, and I'm going to add a fifth that we're starting to do right now. Um, you know, number one is FISBOs, two, door knocking, three, circle prospecting, and four, asking your sphere. Um, and when it comes to lead generation, consistency is the key. It's going to win. Now, the fifth thing that I'm adding in there is that we're starting to do is getting neighborhood data, whether it's weekly or monthly, and go in the neighborhood, Facebook Live, tag the neighborhood as your location, and then it'll track that audience. So you can go in there with, hey, there's five homes for sale this week. The average price is 275, three bedroom, two bath. The average pending is this, the average sold is that. Thanks, have a great day. They call it the market minute. And so you only wanna be there for a minute. And literally you could do you know, a couple of neighborhoods in a day and just keep, just drive to the next one. Learn the data real quick, go live, tag yourself there, the next one go live. And you keep doing that, that'll start generating some, wow, he's constantly in Sable or Sweetwater or Winter Garden or um, Horizons West or wherever your neighborhood is that you want to focus. Right. Um, 
Yeah, that's um, that goes a little bit along with geo farming, but it's a you know spreading a wide net, so that's awesome. Yeah. So that'll so that'll be what criteria. Did you say should be covered in that? What's that? What what criteria did you say? Oh, just active, the, the active pending and sold, and that's it. Active and, pending. And you know sold. what the average price of each one is. You don't need to get into bedrooms and bathrooms, but get into the the price. Uh, the the active. You know, I guess you can just call it the average price of the actives, the pendings, and the solds. And right now there'd be, hey, there's, I'm going to a listing appointment in a little bit. Hey, there's two active listings. Um, there's one pending and there's seven solds. Um, you know, and then, hey, guys, if you're interested in selling, I can come back, get you some, some hard data on what your house is worth, you know, go to, and then, then go to the next community, literally. But you're tagging yeah. yourself in the location. So I just started doing some videos in front of my listings. Hey, it's Todd Schroth, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we just sold this home for 10000 over asking price, had 12 offers. We've got 10 buyers that are missing out on this property. If you're thinking about selling, we have we could potentially already have a buyer for your home. Um, and if it's not your listing, go to your office's listing and do the same thing. Yeah, it gives you gives you all kinds of uh, opportunities for content. Yeah, and um, yeah, same thing. I used to do um, what's currently for sale, how many are pending, how many sold in the last X amount of days. You could say 90 days or 30 days. Yeah. The average dollars per square foot and the average days on the market. That's that's something similar to what I that's used to perfect. do. That's perfect. Adding those two things in, I think, will help. Yeah. Um, you know, and then it's the next thing kind of dives into the three questions to ask the, to discover the seller's motivation is what is prompting your move? How soon do you need to be there? And what will happen if you don't sell? What will happen if you don't sell being the identifier, like how motivated is this person? Correct. Do will they turn it into a rental? Will they turn it into something else there? Um, right. And that was kind of diving into the FISBO side. You, there's like a lot of things you want to, you know, there's an eight week process to get into the FISBO side of things. You want to prepare and deliver CMAs, market updates, staging info, lender information, um, open house marketing material so they can try it themselves. The more you're in front of them, the more you're going to have an opportunity to, um, you know, have, have the, the chance to get that listing from them. Right. Um, and then they're diving into expired listings. And obviously the name, main reason any, any house wouldn't sell is location, condition, and price. If you've got the right price and it's the worst location, it's going to sell. Mm -hmm. um, you know, power lines, train tracks, or highway behind you, and a sinkhole, it'll still sell if you got the, the right price. price on it. Right, right. Um, yeah, there's a price that every home will sell out there for. Yes, exactly. There's a buyer for every property. It's just a matter of having another right price. Um, and then, you know, things that they, they want to know, you, you want to know your market, be the expert. So I think the more you can repeat the process in the neighborhoods, it's going to help drive the data in. And it's like, you know, the average days on market, the average sales price, list of sales price ratio, number of homes sold and number of active and under contract, which is what we just discussed. Um, the listing presentation should be, you know, getting to know you, why they should choose you and the pricing of the home. That's really the main thing. And then always compare apples to apples. Don't just try and take all pool homes and then compare it to a non-pool home if that's what your market is. Right. Yeah. And, and if you do, obviously, you got to make adjustments for that like the appraisers do and let the seller yep. know that you're making that yep. adjustment for those purposes. And if there's so, no other non-pool home selling, you've got to use pool homes to comp it out and knock 20 grand or whatever the value is off for the pool. The other thing it, it gave was uh, was a list of list of questions for uh, the seller, you know, that you can ask during a list list a listing presentation, but also um, uh, a list of questions for the seller to ask agents during an interview if they were to interview other agents. So, yes. um, you know, one of the purpose of those questions is to highlight your own skills and experience. Well, it's the like the top ten. And I'll run through some of them. What's the ideal outcome today? And you want to keep repeating the questions from them. You know, where are you looking at moving? What is your ideal time frame? Uh, tell me how you feel about this move. What would happen if you if your home sold fast? Um, will the proceeds be used for the down payment? Uh, what would happen if your home did not sell, which is things we've talked about? Think about price and then uh, what's in, what's more important, time or price? And what would make our experience a 10 plus? And then, and I had that last week. I had somebody say, look, bring your A game because I'm interviewing four people. So, you got to go in full boat. It might you got to tweak your presentation to the person, not the not the well the opportunity either one, uh, but you got to tweak your presentation to that person there. And then um, 
how does someone work with you? Is it is like it's the best way to communicate and stuff with them? And a lot of this also, you know, we talked about it on on uh, on another call is being familiar with the disc profile. So if if those of you know if you're watching this and you don't have any familiarity with the disc profile, you should do some research on it. Take a disc profile assessment for yourself to determine which one you are, and then when you do that, the results will give you what type of personality you tend to have, and then how best to work with different types of other personalities. So that's the, when when Todd says you can curtail your questions and your presentation to the personality of the seller. This is this is a way that you can do that. So it's really, in my opinion, really important to have this information to have studied it at some point. No, I think it's a, it's a uh, that's great to do. And like I, I'm still trying to learn disc, you know, and I'm learning disc right now. What lead generation is best for the certain profile for the agent? Um, I know I'm a high D, but um, I'm not a guy who's going to pick up the phones and make calls as far as cold calling. Um, but that's what high D's do. Uh, so I'm like that that medium road. Um, you know, I, I want to learn that more. It's it is a cool talent if someone has that. Um, you know, diving into the buyers, this is a little bit different. I mean, every market's a little bit different about buyer consults and stuff. Um, you know, the, getting into buyer consultations, I think, is the main thing. You want to know, you want to show them how it is to work with you and then what to expect. Um, you know, some of the things they talked about in the buyer package were copy the sales contract. So because like our market right now is still hot, I want to be able to just fill in the blanks, send it off. And then they send it back to me with no questions asked, just reviewing the numbers. Um, if they get it and you're trying, you got a deadline on the offer, they're asking about, hey, section line 3C, what does this mean? Um, you know, whatever. And so that you've already um, gone over that with them. So they're just mm -hmm. looking at making sure, you, you know, you guys have the price you discussed, that it's the escrow and the down payments all correct. And the closing date's what you guys have discussed. Then it's just hit it and send, sign and send away. Um, that was a topic of one of our recent huddles. You know, what's what as a team, we were deciding what we want in our buyer consultation package. Yeah. And so this 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 training that we're doing gives you a shortcut because it has all of the, you know, it gives you a bunch of ideas and then you choose what you feel is most important for your own consultation package. Yeah. I mean, there was a cool. I was watching the video yesterday he had on there. He did the X buyer one buyer two or did, did the T whatever. And talked about like what are the things you cannot have in a house that you will not have, you will not even look at it. And so it's getting those things there. Now, what of these three things you just told me are negotiable? You know, are you okay with a railroad track behind your house? You know, if it's like if if it had everything there and that was the only thing that was left, would you be okay with that? You know, so we can go show those because I don't want to show you properties that don't have things that you don't want. You know, just because it's got four bedrooms, three bathrooms doesn't mean it's the right property for you. I'm okay um, with train tracks if they're abandoned. Abandoned train tracks are okay. That's a future walking trail. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and you want to talk to them about your buyer agreement, what it is to, to work with you, and show them that the buyer agreement, take it and rip it up in front of them. If we agree we're not meant to work with each other after a few, after a few showings, we rip it up. There's no contract. We're good. You know, what it is with you know the commission, how the commission works. Usually it's paid by the seller, but if it's not, this is what we charge. So mm -hmm. it also puts in their head that if the agent's only paying a dollar, they owe you the other three percent or whatever your commission is you want on a on a listing. Now 99% of the agents do pay a uh, or sellers pay a commission to the buyer's agent. But if you want three percent on all your transactions and only paying two or two and a half, cool the buyer understands up front that they need to pay that other half point or point that's there which is all about creating the business that you want out of real estate. Yep. You know, this, this business can be personalized and you can structure it in a way as the boss of your own business, as you were just describing. One of the cool ideas is uh, frequently asked questions that, you know, will help yes. so many buyers out by having a list of frequently asked questions that other buyers have asked in the past. It's just like you can hit those questions and boom, all of, all of their questions are answered. Plus, several that they didn't even think to ask that they would have thought of later on. So if you yeah. can know what's going to happen ahead of time and just put it all out on the table, it's going to make you more efficient, be able to help you close more deals every year. Yeah. I, I like that because doing the FAQs and having the two or three pages of it, you don't need to get into full on run on sentences. Just, Hey, what happens if you don't find me a home or, you know, like, yeah, we ripped the contract up. You go to the next one. Um, 
you know, do you work with a, do you work other areas outside of the Longwood? Yes, I do. Do you, you know, do you have an inspection recommendation? I mean, you find that all your FAQs, you're going to find those through doing buyer consults. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of like with our agents when we're putting them through training, you know, the best way to, to um, learn the business is to fail forward. The best way, you're never going to become an expert unless you actually go out and do it. And so it's getting out and having the conversations, even role playing. And it's, I mean, you and I could learn a lot from each other, tailoring our questions a little bit differently. Like you might ask it different than I do. And I, hey, that actually sounds better to, to ask it that way. For the team leaders as well, I think this training is really valuable too, because for the team leaders, you can have all of this information together. When you're bringing agents onto your team, you have a, a well-oiled machine. You have all of this, all of these resources put together. Frequently asked questions would would help a new agent also, you know, yes. just as much as it would a customer, it would help a new agent uh, just have all those answers on one sheet, part of their buyer consultation package. So imagine that as part of your initial training. I think it's going to make a huge difference. Yes. So buyers was not as detailed as the sellers because obviously the buyers are going to be calling off signs and other things. Obviously our next couple of weeks is going to be out to how to find the business. I think next week we're going in or this week we're working on open houses. So that'll be, you know, the strategy there. And we actually have Mr. Jeff Osborne coming in to teach us open houses on the 26th what he does to collectively sell 30 homes a year just off open houses. Yes, I can tell you one of the things he does is consistently scouts for open house opportunities. Yes. yes. He will so, find a way to fill his Saturdays and Sundays. And if he do two a day, he would. Yeah. That, you know, one of the key things, uh, one of the reoccurring ideas throughout the book and throughout successful real estate agents experience is consistency. And whatever you do, when you're consistent, you, 10x your results. Yep. No. So, uh, yep, next week is open houses. So, we'll be covering, recapping on that. Plus, uh, the bonus information from Jeff is always awesome. Yep. Uh, I think that's it for today, right? That's it. We All are, right. We are good. We're I'll, two days caught up. Perfect. I'll be catching up with you later in the week. So, everyone out there, have an amazing week this week. Make it an awesome win. Yep, you guys do it. Win the week. Talk to you soon. See you later, Daniel. Take care.